The township of Waluna is 966 kilometres northeast of Perth and is situated on the edge of the desert at the gateway to the Canning Stock Route and Gun Barrel Highway. Gold was first discovered near Waluna on St Patrick's Day 1896. The discovery of gold caused a gold rush to the area and the birth of the town which began to thrive and prosper, with the population growing to over 9,000 people by the mid-1930s. At its peak, the town had a regular railway service to Perth, four hotels and many other amenities and facilities. Immediately after World War II, underground mining ceased in the area and gold operations were wound down to virtually nothing. By 1953, only 357 people remained in the area and by 1963, the population had dwindled down even further to about 90 people. In 1981, gold mining recommenced in the Waluna area, which began the resurgence in the industry that continues today. The pastoral industry in the region is producing quality cattle and sheep, and experimentation in some agricultural ventures has occurred with some success. The population of the town of Waluna is in recent years stabilised at about 300, including a large population of Indigenous Australians. The weather conditions are very harsh in the area, with average rainfall of approximately 250 millimetres, or 10 inches, per annum, and extreme temperature variations between summer at over 40 degrees and winter below freezing. Well, here we are at the... Uh sort of start of the gun barrel, doesn't start the other side of Carnegie, but we're standing out in front of the, the gun barrel grocery store. like a rat. This is Nyoma, it's uh, old abandoned cattle yards. Here comes Larry. And the Captain Riggs mobile. He reckons these are finches, these little birds. Yeah. Which they probably are, he knows a lot more about birds than I do, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely finches. They've got red beaks. This will be the only source of water around for a fair while, I reckon, wouldn't you? This is actually just pulling in in his little nice end. We just stopped for lunch. This is Wanganoo, something like that anyway, Wanganoo Creek. It's a good camping area, we're not camping here though.
you don't see much water out here, so a place like this is a bit of an oasis, really. It's time to hit the road. And this is, uh, this is where we've been. Just a delightful little spot, just in off the road. We come over a rise and this is the view that we get and there's the guys down ahead of us. This is the Mingol River. And I'm pointed east at the moment where we're headed of course. 427 and this is Carnegie Station. Carnegie Station is the last place you can buy fuel before Warburton if travelling east and a welcome end to a gruelling drive across the gun barrel if travelling west. Either way, Carnegie offers excellent facilities for the weary traveller with campground or cabins hot shower, huge camp kitchen, and a basic store. 8 Carnegie, written on the roof for the uh, identification by aircraft. You don't know what to expect when you come into these places, but this is what it is. Well, we were in Sandstone, we were talking to a gentleman called Trout, who told us to that the lady uh, looking after this place was Faye Smith, also Faye Smith, filling up the cruiser. No, I knew, I knew, 90, I should have been 99%. Sure. Yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Having trouble identifying where it is, and we're certainly not going to use it. When it's hot and Well, this is the camping ground here at Waluna. Got the two cruisers over there, the patrol here. Carnegie Station. <laughs> Carnegie Station, you're right. It is Carnegie Station. Getting behind myself. This is the first tent I've ever put up in my life, I think. I might have done one or two in Europe, but I can't remember it. Ah, uh, yes. Took me about nine minutes. Chateau Riggs. <laughs> Very impressive, Riggs. All right. Do you own this? Yeah. You didn't borrow it off anyone? No, no, this is one I took on the last two trips I've done. The one that we did two years ago to Broome, as we're in Beenham. Beenham. Well, that's Beenham's. That's Beenham's tent. And that's Dad's old one over there. It was a good job that being put up that one over there, wasn't it, Riggs? I reckon so. And the tar's just coming along. The truck has been ready to go. It took him about three minutes to do his. And he's got the fire on. Night two dinner here at Carnegie. <laughs> Braised steak and mushrooms with... Uh, Yes, mashed potatoes. Yeah, mashed potato, which is powdered mashed potato. Sensational. I got the mixture wrong earlier. I had to mix some more in. It wasn't enough. So you know, Rick, in the braised steak, in the onion braised steak, it's real steak. No. You reckon it could be horse meat? Wow. They're having the same as what I did. This is Len Bedell. He was the man that built the gun barrel highway. Not single-handedly, but certainly he was the surveyor and the man in charge. A later photo, 1988. That's Len Bedell at Mount Bedell. That was taken in 1965. That's the gun barrel construction party there, 1950. 
six. That's the grader. Probably around the Giles area, 1956, the grader's there. We'll be seeing that in a few days. That was Giles early, early days. 1956 again. And that's Len Bedell with his stretcher, well that's his Land Rover and his stretcher. That's where he slept across the gun barrel highway itself. One night. Going solo on Ricky as he used to do. Plenty of information here in the Carnegie homestead. Interesting stuff. And that seems to be normal on these trips. Another flat tyre. Certainly for me anyway, these tube tyres, I don't like them. And the sun's rising beautifully in the east at the moment. Another little view of this campsite. And some of the mayhem that goes on here. And directly behind me, the camp kitchen. It also doubles as a shop. And a mess all. Very nice. <laughs> Dad's made himself laugh again. <laughs> well, July... There, packing it for you, <laughs> July 10. I want to get up there and help him. 2006. Down here. Can you imagine both of us up there? Down here hanging shit on him. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? Did he pull off? I don't know. I don't think it's just imagine you've got something going down on the glue. Oh. <laughs> it's the uh, underbonnet checks. All okay. It's our first, uh, first encounter today with a real bad rose, won't it? That's the only casualty for this old girl. Broken. Did you compress a handy lorry or? Like Fog light. It's always handy on this car. <laughs> Why? Oh, yeah. That way at least it goes down. Alright boys, see you in a while. Alright, let's go check it. Well here we go. Won't get to Warburton tonight. And there's where the part over on the uh, starboard side, there's Carnegie Station. Gun barrel, it's only six kilometres out of uh, Carnegie. Now this is the uh, the bit that's looked after, the bit that's graded uh, and maintained. So it gives us an idea of what she's going to be like a little bit later on when we get to the point bit that's uh, never maintained. This should be an interesting day today. Okay, there was an emu with a little chick. Currently about 55 kilometres out from Carney. And uh, this is the gun barrel is at the moment. Now over to the side of us here. That's the sort of country that he had to actually go through to build this particular track. He, uh, he drove through and uh, got down to, this is Len Bedell we're talking about, and he got to uh, where he could see the grader and he would flash his uh, mirror at them and then the grader would then So there are the sand ridges alongside the road on the gun barrel. About 65 kilometers out of Carnegie. <laughs> Old Falcon XR, or even an XT. 
Wagon? Been out here a while, probably. Well, that's our first camel. Unfortunately, it's not the way we wanted to see him. Oh, a place and smell truck. Love it. <laughs> We're now crossing what we believe to be the Fame Rangers roads that have deteriorated. Well, it's, it's fairly rock to stay over this particular piece. We're right in the middle of it. Is that an orange? Yes. That was nasty, Because on the road here. <laughs> there's a number of ridges now across the road. Obviously, where as it rains, the water rushes down the hill and goes you know, through the road. It creates these little, uh, little drains across the road, I guess you could call it. And uh, they can catch you out if you're not careful. Sorry. Okay, this is the. Uh, we're now sort of a, nearly 100 kilometres out of uh, Warburton and uh, this is the countryside as it is at the moment. Now we have moments where the road is dead smooth and no problems when you get these corrugations um, and then you get rocky outcrops and then it's back to smooth again. It's, it's real. Here comes Rigsy. We're on the top of Mount William Lambert. The other two have been stopped to uh, film some camels. That's along the road. And this is they coming up the hill. They're all present and accounted for. And what are we looking at? We're looking at this. This is the sort of country that we're going to be living in for the next uh, couple of weeks. Absolutely fantastic. Around to the side of the uh, the hill here, there's a cave in underneath there. And as we go around, possibilities of others down there as well. So this is a plaque on the top of uh, William Lambert Hill. And this is a cairn on top of the hill. There's a grasshopper cunningly designed to uh, look like the rock. Woke up this morning to a uh, mostly flat left rear dead Lawrence. And he's pumped it up twice, once along the gun barrel just then. And he's decided enough's enough. 
Well, at least you can say you've changed the wheel at the top of uh, Mount William Lambert and now on the gun barrel. I don't know if any other people could say that. Well, many people want to say that one. Okay, so that was Mount William Lambert. Now this is the, the way down. Back to ye old gun barrel. Rear wheel changed. Hopefully no more problems. Because right at the moment we're currently near the one spare. Mind you, we do have a new tube to put into the other tyre. Or at least we can repair the one that's damaged. Fairly inhospitable country out here. It's the remains of a truck. What's that truck in an old international? Bedford, right? Bed <laughs> Bedford truck. Oh, what's one? You could get it going, couldn't you? I'd say from the phone number on the side of the truck that it's been here for quite a while. This is the Mankili, uh, Mankili clay pan. In wet weather you don't dare go across, there's actually a heap of tracks around it. Um, so I reckon if you get caught in this you just go down, down, deeper and down. It's just an idea. Now, in actual fact, the road does do a little job just here, but basically, look at that in the distance, dead straight. There's the road going on there. The only reason there's a diversion at this point is because of problems with that little straight section they couldn't, obviously couldn't fix. Otherwise, the road is just dead gun barrel straight. Hence, the gun barrel highway, I guess. Okay, we've left the shore of Walloona and now obviously the track is no longer being maintained at all. Got a couple of cars coming towards us so we just might try and get a little bit of information from them as we go. Up on the version track alongside the main one. Alright, we've hit some seriously rough roads now. Welcome to the real gun barrel. <laughs> this is a. Uh, well, what would you call this? Call it a date point. A date and point. Yep. Surveyors use. Yeah. I'd say Liam Bedell put it there. The man responsible for this road. Never opening up Central Australia. This is the Lynn Bedell tree beside of Wilbany. Miles to Giles. The plaque on the tree is an exact replica of Lynn's plaque that uh, was lost a few years ago after it was erected in 1968. Connie Sue Bedell put this up in June 2003 and here it is on the tree. Forward admission 193 miles. Today we've come 140 miles. Uh, 
This is looking west. It's incredible to think you're in the middle of nowhere. And just with these, whatever they use, sextant and the compass, you just push through the bush, through the spin effects and had to have some fortitude, I'd suggest. Okay, this is the Geraldton bore. It was drilled by CRA Exploration in April 1989. Lunch at Geraldton bore. This is literally about 300, not even that, metres from the Lynn Bedell tree. 150. Briggs, what's on the agenda this afternoon? Well, what we're uh, looking at about 30 kilometres to travel. Uh, then we're at the uh, Everett Junction, Lynn Bedell Clark. That's in about 31 from here. I should say 2, 2.30 or something like that. Come up to the Gary a, Highway Junction too, aren't we? 50. Get a shot of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's coming up 30 k's, then probably about 50 k's down then Bedell Monument on the right, and then Mount with Mount Bedell, and then Camp Bedell with another 10 k's on, so probably 100 k's from here I reckon we'll be stopping, camp in the night. Beautiful. We're looking at about 100, 150 to Warburton, I reckon after that tomorrow. Sounds good. Okay, we've just left the, uh, the borehole. And this is the Gibson Desert Nature Reserve we are entering now. Just a perfect shot straight down. That's the Gun Barrel Highway. Uh, disappears up into the distance down there. And look at that, beyond it keeps going. He didn't pass away near by this location, he just passed this location. Back to the gun barrel, see? This is what we're stopping for. There's the gun barrel, just straight, dead as straight as a die, just disappearing into the distance. Straight between those two hills, nearly. And while the guys are having a look at the visitor's book, which we will all sign, Julie. And this is uh, Lambertel signpost. Carnegie, Carnegie Homestead, 152 miles behind us. Warburton Mission, 170 miles to the west. Giles, 305 miles to the west. This is the North, uh, North Road... Gary Highway, Keening Snock Route, well, 20, oh, there's all sorts of stuff on here. Lambert Dell, 27th of April, 1965. Oh, and this is a replica. Put there by his family, because the originals keep getting knocked off. This is actually Everard Junction, and that's a camel toe. Now, there's obviously a few camels around the place here. This is another significant Bedell landmark on the gun barrel. Northern Territory Surveys, it says. It's just a little rock in the ground there in the middle here. But as I just discovered, it come apart. So some bastard will pinch that, unfortunately, but not us. Little local animals. So you can do with a good feed. First dingo of the trip. He's obviously seen these vehicles before. He thinks we're a source of food. In the USA we came across a few. Coyotes. He's pretty lean. Right at the foothills, foothills we are of Mount Gordon. He says they're not going to give me any food. Maybe the next one will.
and there's a potential campground we're just discussing at the moment. Lorry and Gloria. Obviously Lorry's a bit keener at this juncture. We decided this is where we're camping. Jeez, it's a bloody steep climb up here, but hey, the view is worth it. Look at this. Bit of a barney happening down the hill, of course, as to uh, who's going to get the prime spot for uh, pitching a tent sleeping tonight. <laughs> We've got the moon, the moon on one side in the east. There's Woody and Laurie and our camp. And the bottom. And the sun setting in the west. All right, the lads have decided it's Mount Everard we're actually on. Mount Gordon's the other one. Obviously, this is the top. In the middle of nowhere, really. Absolute middle of nowhere. And a fantastic place to be. You can just see for miles and miles and miles. That's the other part of Mount Everard. And Mount Gordon apparently is across the road over there. And there's the Taj, the Iron Horse, the Riggsmobile, and the Kib. And that, of course, not to be forgotten, is the gun barrel. The sound effects such as sun going down. He had a permit on two weeks. Not here. Not here. There we go, it's gone. That's something we haven't seen too much of, cloud. It's weather has been absolutely fault. Yeah, you turn around for where the sun set. What kind of disc you got in there, truck? Big one. Good one, Len. Done well, mate. Right. Mate. Here you go. Truck's got some uh, chops on the go for the night. The veggies. Burned veggies. Because Brett wasn't here to turn them. Because what was Brett doing? Filming the sunset on the mountain with Fucky. Um, Full set up here in the truck mobile. And for a look at the other side, the other half, see how the other half lives. Oh, onion. Yep. Spag bowl. Let's go. Yep, onions a must have. We'll have to put two in there, I think. Oh yeah, you can't have too much onion. Go over the other side. Back up going. Fire. This is Gloria. 
slaving over. Slaving over dinner. Yep. Not yet anyway. Shortly. Good morning, Tuesday morning, the 11th of July, I believe it is. And uh, it's 8.30 in the morning. And this is the gun barrel, we're on it again. It uh, wasn't too cold last night, it was a nice night. This is the countryside we're travelling through at the moment. And we're heading towards Mount Bedell. Well, we had a look at the visitors' book back there at uh, Gary, uh, the Gary Highway turn off. It's amazing how many people have been through this track in the last two or three weeks, let alone so far this year. I mean, there are about 11 or 12 people through here yesterday. Despite that, we still get all that grass growing up the middle of the track. More of the uh, desert for you. And this is part of the roadway. At this particular section. Beautiful. Ah, yes, the delights of the gun barrel. About 12 kilometres from Mount Medell, is it? Yep in the distance. Okay, it's a little bit of a uh, dodgy road here. We missed the worst bit of it, but uh, <laughs> filming the worst bit of it. Our turn. No excuse for running him out of fuel on this one. He's with the party uh, that just went past the other way, who uh, apparently the front car is running petrol, gas, split a tank, lost 115 litres. It looks like he's going to be about 50 litres short, or fit, run about 50 kilometres short of Carnegie. We're right in the middle of three little hills at the moment. But right ahead of us is Mount Bedell. That's the next place we're heading for. Still track leading up to the top. And here we are, right at the base, almost, of Mount Bedell. Did I got halfway up and I went. That's a good foot half it in. <laughs> Well, on the top of Mount Bedell now. The Memorial Theodolite was erected by four-wheel drivers from every Australian state at Mount Bedell and was unveiled on May 12, 1996. 163 people turned up with 71 trucks at the Memorial's unveiling ceremony. Down 
Well, this is Camp Adele, and there's water available but no pump. Well, that has changed. According to this, the pump was put in by uh, R. Jennings, sort of Karawara by the looks of things, on the 12th of May 2006. So there is now a pump here at Camp Adele. Any spokes Lane Bell talks about changing an engine in a truck and they did it by digging out a piece of earth and then rigging up uh, some buddies across the uh, uh, across the uh, dugout area and then driving the truck in and then having to change the engine. That's basically that's what they were doing. What we think, so this is where it happened. Now what really saddens me is not that people come out here and stay at the camp and it's, or in fact have a party here. It's just the fact that they don't take their shit with them when they leave. This is disgusting. I'd like to say it's un Australian, but unfortunately it's not. It's a Rilaki mountain. In the middle of nowhere, there's no, not a lot of trees around here. We're in the middle of a big plain. I think it's raining over towards the south, which is that way. Small for the camera trucky. Okay, Notabilis Hill, middle of nowhere. There's a stone can being built. There's no explanation for what it's all about that I'm aware of. There it is. Someone had plenty of time on their hands. It's trucking and rigs now coming down towards the bore where we're currently stopped. This track is very sandy, very sandy. some water here and set the threads and get something to drink. Now look at them come for it. Oh they're loving it. We're somewhere here on this corner I'd say. Len Bedell's tree would be about 25 k's I'd reckon down and then 35 to Mount Charles and then it's 52 down to the Warburton Roadhouse. Is this so point where we stopped last night? Where we stayed last night was up here at Mount Everard. That's right. Everard, right here. Stay the road from Mount Gordon. So we've travelled down here, that's where we were Mount Bedell, Camp Bedell we had a look at, that's where the hole in the ground truck repair was and we're, I'd say, around here somewhere now. Beautiful. I'm sure it's in small land. Well, we're at another one of Len Bedell's trees. Uh, this one indicates that we're exactly halfway between Carnegie and Giles. Carnegie's 223 miles, almost halfway anyway, 223 miles back to the west and Giles is 235 miles to the east. That says Warburton 126, this is the uh, turn off to the Heather Highway. Down there, head south off the gun barrel here. 
Yeah, one of the conditions of doing the gun barrel is you're not allowed to travel between uh, the Heather Highway and Jackie Junction. A lot of people do it, but uh, under the conditions of the permits, you can't do it. So this is the Heather Highway, and it was not looked after terribly much. In fact, it's not looked after at all. What the boys have stopped for down the road is they've got some camels they're looking at. Slow ride down. Riggs is a camel up here, eh? No worries, mate. See the other two? Where is it? To the left or right? Now the great central road. Just about three kilometers out of Warburton, and if that. It's the Warburton Roadhouse, they don't like you filming in Warburton, so I hope you're doing too much. But uh, there's not really much to film, to be honest. All the fuel out here is under lock and key. Case in point. Warburton for dinner. What are you having, Riggs? Well, it's pretty flashed. Sausages and cheese popped off. <laughs> not like the hot dogs get spread. And Trucky's having a oh, pizza. McCain. You're down at a game. McCain, uh, Hawaiian, Warburton and special. And it's cheap as bloody bird. It's a shocker night, isn't it? Freezing it cold, windy. Freezing, windy. Just wind. That's cold now, isn't it? That's picked up again then. Yeah. Gonna be some rain coming with this, mister. <laughs> well, here, Edwin. Enjoy your dinner, boys. What are you cooking this evening, Jack? Mate, I'm going to have uh, two cans of Irish stew and some mashed potato. The morning after, Warburton. It was blowy and it was rainy, but we've survived the night. It's a great old overcast kind of day. Because of the conditions, Ash has decided to go over and ask the police what the uh, conditions are ahead, whether it's widespread. So they came in overnight, and it's been raining all night, so the road looks pretty sloppy from here on in. It's the road out from Warburton to where are we going? Uh, we're going to turn up to the Gut Barrel, by the way. All right. 
can. It's where they're going. This is another one of the plaques placed on the trees by Lee Bedell, giving latitude, longitude. This is actually on the road between Great Central Highway and Jackie Junction. Okay, this is Jackie Junction. See, uh, our back behind us, dials up to the northeast. We've just come from Warburton. This is where the gun barrel, the old gun barrel down there, turns north for a while, and that's where we're going. Like one of uh, Lady Dell's normal flights, like, uh, how far to wherever and uh, the guys on the truck. There's a bottle at the bottom, which obviously there's messages from someone. Here we are, travelling north on the Gun Barrel Highway. See it's awfully wet, awfully cold. Yeah, yeah. Heading up towards Patajar community in the million dollar corner. Rain hasn't stopped since about six last night. I don't think it will stop, but the road seems pretty good. Might be a bit of a different story when we get on the highway too. This one still leads to a community, so fairly well maintained. We'll have a crack. Let see. Turn your backside to us. Uh, we'll just have a boat peep and see who that is down there in the road. Meanwhile, we'll just go for a bit of a wander. See plenty more of those before the day's out. The next 187 is going to be considerably more difficult than the previous 157 was. Just come out towards Million Dollar Corner, that's the next one. We started down here this morning at uh, Warburton. There it is, Warburton. Now up, Jackie Junction right in the middle of the screen. Good road all the way up here to uh, the junction, then a million dollar corner next. Continue on through the Gibson Desert, up to where Giles perished, not Giles, sorry, Gibson, his assistant. And then down to the camp somewhere around in front of the Rawlinson Range tonight, then down to Warracuna slash Giles in the morning. We've just had a bite to eat back at the corner into the community and we are now onto the abandoned section of the gun barrel. This is early days in the uh, abandoned section of the uh, highway, but uh, not bad so far. Countryside's quite pretty. track at this point is very definitely sand. These are sand hills. It's a red sand. And uh, the roads just cut through them. It's really not hard to drive on. Quite pleasant track, considering. All of a sudden some trees have appeared. Bigger trees. Ash was just saying that being that it's raining, it just really gives the place a sort of a different atmosphere than what we would have felt if we'd come through here on a, on a hot, dry day, like the first couple of days were. But we are in a desert, believe it or not. This is about two minutes after that last piece of footage, and this is, uh, we've come to a fork in the road. Says this is the right way, but up about a few metres, it, it's pretty bushy and that looks like a better road here, but it might not be. So we'll keep plugging this way and see what happens, eh? That road to the right on your map, Briggs? 
No, it's not on mine. Um, all naked. That ticker ticker uh, rock holes are about 20 k's up on the left. It sounds about right. Oh, I haven't even looked, mate. There's a boar up here and a few k in about five k's. A what? A boar. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been down the road there off to the uh, right on mine. No, nah, mate, either, mate. Yeah, must be a new one. Exploration road, probably. Beautiful countryside, but as Len Bedell says, you'll actually turn around and bite you. It's somewhere in this area that Gibson died in 1874 when he was exploring with Ernest Giles. We uh, can't locate the blaze tree uh, in honouring Gibson, who died somewhere in this area. But first, in 1874, and uh, he was Ernest Giles. One of Ernest Giles' three assistants, and um, he was the first white man to die out here. And uh, Giles so named it. There's an after him as a result. This is just the most gorgeous drive through here. Some beautiful tree country. It opens out into the Spinifex country, they're back in the trees again. Just absolutely beautiful. And then different again. There's only a few hundred metres on. I don't know what we expected when we came up here, but we certainly didn't expect this, that's for sure. This is just stunning. making a bit of a comment here that if uh, these sand hills, which is what they are, it's all sand hills, and you didn't know where you were, this of white sand, you'd think you're down the beach. It's the same sort of country, it's just, just red. It's interesting to note that uh, this was the major road between uh, Perth and Alice Springs via Giles until 1977. Since, long since abandoned. Now used mainly or only by uh, four wheel drive enthusiasts who want to experience the, uh, at least try and obtain some understanding of what uh, Len Bedell and his gun barrel road construction company, company went through in constructing these roads. There's the red sand on the sand hills. Another blaze, Len Bedell tree. 12th of April, 1958. 70 miles to Giles. 144 miles to Warburton. So that's what we've done today. Len Bedell, 13th of April, 1958.
expect somebody to be the overdrawn. They were out of the list of it actually, but uh, that's on the side. Brushing the mirrors on either side, giving the arrow a good old whack on the other side. Just a minute of travel was uh, within the group. What a long road here. Due to happen at some point. It's okay though. Up until now, the track's been fairly sandy and fairly, uh, fairly good, and you can move along at a reasonable bat. Now all of a sudden it's become sort of rocky. It's almost been too good to be true up to now, so we'll just see what happens from here on in for the day. Track's got a bit wet and sloppy all of a sudden. Another one of Lens Blaze trees. about uh, 13 kilometres on from the last one. Lunch time out here in the Rawlinsons. By the side of the gun barrel. Bit of drizzle about still, hasn't really stopped since 6.30 last night. Fred. Yo. Yeah, Fred. Fred. You want to come around here? You can uh, zoom up on the GPS on the dash and see exactly where we are. Lake Farnham. Between, uh, just past Lake Farnham. Do you expect to see that sort of countryside? Yeah. It's between Lake Farnham and Christopher Lake. There you go. Okay. The very latest here. Clean up, mate. <laughs> it is, isn't it? We'll be able to trace something on the mat later. The Rawlinsons are now starting to come into range. <laughs> Play on words, apparently. And then we set out of the Lawsons, another of the Bedell blazed trees. <coughs> it's the Rawlinson Rangers cruising away down the back behind us. So you can see the country's changed quite considerably now. Another blazed tree. Herman Green in his book, Journeys of Jelly Night Jack, when he came through here in 1965 with Jack Murray, said that it appeared as if the Gunbell Road construction party were very proud of their road because uh, there was route markers every 10 miles or so. Well, doing well. A bit slower that run, a few more corrugations. And this tree uh, sits at the foothills of the Rawlinsons, over in the background. Just imagine what this is like when the river's uh, when the river's running. I don't think you'll be driving through here somehow. But again, who knows? Maybe it doesn't get full of water, but 
can't imagine it not being that way. Still under the Rawlinsons, heading towards Giles. Still the drops of rain keep coming, hasn't stopped all day. Not much through here, it is. We said we didn't anticipate we have to handle any of this when we get left berth. Been no rain for months. We cop it. We cop it. Still, it's made an interesting uh, day so far. Night, of course, is another story. Coming towards the end of the gun barrel. There's a mob of about 10 on the right hand side. Camel on the road up here. There's a mob of 10 on about the right here, Laurie. It's been pouring with rain. The pure with all the bush friends. Now this is nowhere near as light as what looks on the video camera, let me tell you. And this is nothing compared to what we've been going through. This uh, is water, there's water on the road, it's getting worse. Uh, I hate to think who's going to have to, someone want to travel for tomorrow. Well, what we're going to try and do is, uh, is there's a bit of it here. We're going to try and make the uh, Warakuna tonight and see if we can't get ourselves some motel rooms. Otherwise, we might be sleeping in the car tonight. Bit damp, wet out there to uh, sleep anywhere else. Okay, back to the job. Truck and I just had a close call. You can't really see here. The gun barrel's really rutted up. There's a road around it, but we didn't take that. Almost had a big one, but we got away with it. That's the sign that faces to the way we just came. So no wonder we didn't see anyone going the other way today. <laughs> Good stuff. We're almost down at the Great Central Road now. Central Horaway, thank you Giles. It's like they've had more than just a couple of showers in that position. And uh, it's very slippery. Gun barrel's better than this one. And gun barrel's better than this. <laughs> All right, we just left the gun barrel. We're now on the Great Central Road. And it's in worse condition than the gun barrel. See, there's been a lot of water pumped up here today, last night. But he's fighting the wheel. Both the other boys behind us. Looking to get into Warakuna Roadhouse.
just like driving through a cup of soup, Jago. <laughs> it's an amp description, mate. Right, that's working. Gorgeous, mate. I'll never see anything like it. Oh, yeah, that makes the music. Cool. You get that? Just fuck up, Sam. Fuck it. Jesus. <laughs> so I couldn't hold it to the video camera, mate. Poor old girl's working hard. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> oh, whoop, I don't like the feel of it. Whoop! Spend half the time sideways, mate. You're having a few hassles there. We're to have some fun, aren't we? <laughs> Thursday morning. It's been raining all night. It's been raining all day yesterday. <clears throat> There's probably more coming. In a couple of inches of rain, and we're at Warakurna. The roads are closed. Had a bit of fun last night uh, driving down the middle of the road, and the vehicle took off. Down a, just, just slid off the road straight down to, towards an embankment, managed to correct it, bring it back on the road again. Someone else wasn't so lucky. Uh, he drove a land cruiser down into a, a drain or lost it down into a drain and hand over ended it. So we booked in for the night, uh, grabbed a couple of backpacker rooms, and we're told this morning, that, you know, at this point in time anyway, we could be here for another couple of days because all the roads have now been closed. There but for the grace of God go I. Uh, last night we lost it on the road and we're very lucky to get out of it. They lost it and slid down into a bank and over they went. One piece of spare parts that we could use. Well, this is the grader that graded originally all the roads when they were being built by Len Bedell and his gun barrel construction or road construction company and kept here for posterity. Not just the fact that it's a grader, it's what the grader's done and what it stands for. It's graded over 6,000 kilometres of roads in Western Australia and Australia. It gives you an idea of how much road it, it graded in Australia. Probably the most famous grader in the world. In the end, it not only did the Woomera um, and Maralinga bomb sites they also did all these roads. So in the end, uh, it, done, it had done 30,000 kilometres of grading. And it was retired to this spot on November 22nd, 1963. Coincidentally, the same day, Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, which is mentioned by Len in his book about the situation. Liam Bedell first surveyed the site for this gold weather station in August 1956, so uh, we're one month off the 50th anniversary. Lenny's cat cage, I like it. If you enjoyed this video, there are over 500 more just like it on this channel. 
subscribe and hit the notification bell and we'll let you know when the next video is available. If you liked this video, hit the like button and feel free to share with your friends. Thanks for watching.